a couple weeks ago. Um, I was at my friend's house for a party and there was a guy there who was like a friend of a friend and we really hit it off. Like I had so much fun getting to know this guy and just like, talking and I like really felt like I could date this guy and a lot of my friends came up and were like, he's really, like it seems like he's really into you. So this week I was doing some light Instagram stalking as one should and he has like several photographs with women in smaller bodies and the places that my- I understand that when you first meet somebody you want to get some background on them because it's like very easy to do that nowadays but this is most definitely a major red flag and the fact that she's just posting this willy nilly as well on the internet to tell people that she's doing Instagram stalking to ensure that the person that she's talking to is like the right person or whatever. Man, dude, I don't know how else to say it than, than that. It's just it's just major red flag. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people might consider red flags to just be a thing of going that just never one and done. Just one and done. A red flag? No. No, a red flag can be something as simple as like, oh, your boyfriend has 10 years on you. That's a red flag because he's way older than you. Or I don't know. Like there's a whole bunch of things where somebody could see a this as a red flag and it's not something as like a a one and done, you know, done with the relationship type of thing. I'm not saying that she's not somebody you should date. I'm just saying it's very, very weird. And also it tells me a lot about you that you're like doing Instagram stalking. And then also you find out that he's he's dated like I don't know, thinner women. What does that even mean? Like what <laughs> what is that what kind of what is that indication giving you? My mind went instantly where just awful. And it's, it's just like this dude like these people have a way to make the words that they say in their minds for some reason they don't hear themselves as being crazy but this is crazy you're literally telling me that you saw this man who's probably has friends and family and then like people around him who are women that are traditionally attractive women and you're just literally defining this as like a oh no like my mind is like just exploding with all the terribleness of this guy like am i worthy enough to date this man like dude get why are you looking at it like that and i hate that, they, that my mind went instantly where just awful and i and i hate that they were my first reactions um Again, these were over a course, like, these photos were over the course of, like, 10 years. Yeah, so, like, you're just fucking weird, dude. You're, you're just fucking weird, dude. That's, that is such a, fuck, that is such a mega red flag, dude. And the fact that she's posting this on Instagram, I'm sorry, posting this on TikTok, where thousands of people are potentially going to see this, and she just doesn't care. Like, this is just a normality for her. Like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to post about how I've been Instagram stalking this guy, and I do this constantly whenever I meet a new dude. That's not normal behavior. Like, it's fine that you can do things in your free time that may be a little bit suspect. But you posting about it on TikTok as if this is some kind of like, guys, guess what I did? It was crazy. I fucking Instagram stalked this guy. That's not good. That's creepy. And I instantly just felt like I wasn't attractive enough or desirable enough. Over 10 years. Can you imagine seeing pictures over 10 years, dude? And you're going, he's talked to women that are more attractive than me. I can no longer engage in conversation with this guy. Keep in mind, keep not keep in mind this, right? This guy probably isn't even thinking about this woman, right? <laughs> Think about this. This guy is just minding his own business. He just talked to a random girl at a party or a feng shui or whatever, whatever they were at. And he, he probably doesn't think anything of it. He's probably just like, oh, yeah, she was a nice girl. And then he moved on with his life. And this woman is like, oh, man my knight in shining armor let me instagram stalk him and look through the 10 years plus of pictures that he has how far do you have to go down like how far do you scroll and then go like ah oh, this is not gonna work like this guy's obviously never gonna like me because he's into traditional women oh is that his mom too bad you know like so what this guy's in high school here so what he does he's not gonna want me like it's just what you're saying is so incredibly fucking toxic and bad and for some reason you're not seeing this as a bad thing and i often see this with these plus size influencers or plus size people that have problems with dating is like most of the time even though i do think that the weight is going to prohibit them in a very a very negative way it's oftentimes the other things that are making them less attractive this shit is this shit is right here Th this is not good okay you're just hitting you're just fighting a random guy that you met somewhere and your instagram stalking him you 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 are a walking red flag in my body for attractive enough or desirable enough in my body for someone to want me and i hate that that was my first reaction was due to my size and my plus size body that i love 
I quite you obviously don't love it if you're having these major insecurities about the way that you look and how you're comparing and you're contrasting somebody that's like t over 10 years of pictures. It's insane. But you're comparing and you're con con contrasting the way these women look compared to the way you look. You obviously you obviously feel some type of way about it and you don't look at yourself highly in that particular setting. At least like we're talking about physically speaking. So don't shit. Don't don't try to like shit on me here. You are literally telling us that you are feeling insecure about it. So don't sit there and be like, I love my body. Like, I know my body is good. Okay, well, you just told me otherwise, so. My size and my plus size body that I love, I questioned my um, desirability for this man. Uh, a random dude, by the way. Just some guy that she met somewhere and that she was just like Instagram stalking, dude. That's so, like, that just screams you have no, you have no type of relationship. You have never had any type of interaction with anybody else in a relationship. You, like, it's such a cringy thing, dude, because, like, this is something that I would do when I was, like, 14. Like, if I had just met you, I was like, it's going to be fucking amazing. Like, I'm, I'm going to impregnate this woman, right? We're going to have kids. We're going to have all this white picket fence. You know, you're 14 fucking years old. You don't know anything. you never even seen a vagina before, at least not in real life. you probably seen a ton of vaginas by the time you're fucking watching porn and shit like that. I know I did. But... It is a not good thing to have these types of thoughts and like, you know, th like having these these ideas in your head. How old is this woman? Like 30, dude? You're 30 years old and you're still thinking about it like this? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, dude? Get it, grow up. Grow up. This is this is weird. Um, and I hate the fact that I was like, oh, I wonder if he'd be willing to date a bigger girl. You, you should hate the fact that you were stalking a random guy's Instagram and you were comparing and contrasting over 10 years of pictures to you. No, like... I, I hate that idea of being willing to date. Like, uh, no. Um, and the fact that, like, I would even question my worth and what I would bring into a relationship be just because of three photographs over the course of 10 years. Yeah, you got some problems, man. That's some mental difficulties right there, dude. There's no other way to say it than that. You're weird as fuck. There's, I don't even think the plus sizeivity is a problem here. I think, honestly speaking, it's just the way you think. You're just literally just blurting out terrible, disgusting signs of not good person. And you're putting it fully on display. Anytime a guy's about to date you now, he's going to look back at this video and be like, oh, she's such a nice girl. Oh, wait, what's this video people are linking to me? Oh, ooh, shit. This girl is stalking Instagrams? I wonder how much she knows about me before she even met me. That one, like, we were at the coffee shop that one day. And I gave her a sugar packet. And then suddenly, you know, like she knows everything about you. She knows your whole background, your whole life story, dude. She knows where you went to school, the first car you drove, your first crush, everything. She knows everything about you. This is like, it's not good. That's not good, young lady. I don't know what to say than that. You should grow up. Like, I don't know why you think relationships are like that. They're not supposed to be like that. That's not good. But like, that's what fat phobia does. It's not fat phobia. It's just called you being a creep. And I'm sick of this shit, okay? Women could be creeps. This is some creepy ass shit. I'm sick of just saying like men are creeps because that one time a guy, I don't know, smelled your foot in a dressing room. Like obviously that's creepiness, but this is, this is also creepiness. This right here, what you're looking at, this woman, creep, creep. I, there's nothing to say to that. You're literally stalking Instagrams. Some random guy you just met one time and you're obsessing over him. Weird. Just weird. You're a creep. To someone, like, forget, about, forget about the fat phobia. But like, that's what fat phobia does to someone. Like, that's the blaming all your problems on this phantom entity that may or may not even exist, and that like, and also it's not even fat phobia because you're literally talking about yourself. Are you fat phobic against yourself? What kind of internal biases do you have, dude? What the fuck are you even talking about? If you're literally telling me this is something that's affecting only you, how are you going to sit there and blame it on fat phobia? How's, is the guy fat phobic? The guy that was just having a casual conversation with you? Probably about his like Pokemon collection or something like that? Like what is wrong with you? This is weird as hell to blame it on fat phobia. I don't care how big you are. That's an issue. <laughs> But like, that's what fat phobia does to someone. Like that's, these are the feelings that I have, like yeah. real feelings I have based off of years and years of conditioning of being told that I'm not good enough, uh -huh. that me and my body is not good enough. Lose weight. I don't know what else to say than that, dude. Lose weight. I don't know why you, like, what, what is this boohoo virtue signaling victim card bullshit, dude? Get over yourself. You're a grown ass woman. Nobody owes you shit. I don't know why the fuck you feel so entitled to some random guy you met at a party, at a, a, a festive event, and now you're stalking him and shit like that, dude. Who are you? First of all, dude, that's some weird ass shit. Do you do this at all the times you've ever talked to a guy ever? It's not normal. 
So I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. It's not normal. You gotta grow the fuck up. There's no other way of saying that. It's not even fat phobia. You're just weird. And it's awful. Yeah. I'm so glad. Look in the mirror and say that, please. Good enough. And it's awful. I'm so glad that I like recognized it, that I can have that ability to like reset the mind. <laughs> the fact that I even went there is devastating. Really, really sucks. That is the devastating part? Okay. The fat phobia, the internalized fat phobia that she's representing is the problem. The fact that she didn't think that she was a valuable hashtag boss woman. No, nah, that, that, was, that was not the problem. It, it, that was the problem. Sorry. It wasn't the fact that she was stalking a random dude that she just had no, like one, one interaction with. But it is a different kind of lonely. When a guy or multiple guys slide in your DMs and they flirt with you, they make you feel so good, you know, because they're saying things like, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, your eyes are gorgeous. Oh, you have such a pretty smile. Oh, you're everything that I could want and more. Blah, 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 blah. And then give it a day or two and they're ghosting you. What is wrong with people nowadays? Dude, this is... Nobody owes you anything. And like you're literally... You know, the fact that you're even getting compliments in general. You know... For a long time, I knew dudes that get like maybe one compliment a month and it would be like a backhanded compliment from their best friend where they would like post a picture on their Instagram and their friends would go, you know, bro, you don't look that ugly in that picture. You don't look that gay in that picture. That'd be the compliment. And the guy would go, oh, oh finally, the, my first compliment of the month. And you're over here complaining about the copious amounts of compliments that people are giving you on a daily basis i don't really look at compliments the same way that i feel like most people do i don't really give a fuck most of the time like i always take compliments like somebody's like oh you look nice i'm like oh wow thanks so thanks so much but ultimately when it comes to like people that you're potentially wanting to date i think less is more because then they're more impactful and they probably have more meaning behind them because that person is more willing to actually compliment you on the things that matter as opposed to bullshit like you have a nice smile Okay, thanks, bro. I mean, I appreciate it. I have a nice smile. I have a nice eyes. I have a nice ears, right? I have all the nice kneecaps and things like that. Compliment me on other things, right? Like my dress sense or the way that I look today or how I was able to, you know, uh, the, the work I did or something like that. I don't know. And the same thing could be said with like the I loves you. I, I think that too many people say I love you way too fucking frequently. I think that like if you're machine gunning, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like if you're, if you're machine gunning I love yous as opposed to like hitting that bazooka I love you, I prefer the bazooka. Give me the bazooka. Um... I don't know, dude. Like, what, 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 why are you even upset right now? You're getting ghosted. That's what the entire online dating scene is. You talk to dudes, dudes talk to women, and then you realize that this person has a chlamydia or, like, a, I don't know, a mandingo party was run on them at one point. You get dissuaded or something happens. I don't know, dude. People are super, super, super open nowadays about their sexual experiences. You know how many times I've hit up a girl, and within maybe the first 20 texts I got was like, hey, just to let you know... I've had sex with a black guy and I'm just like, oh, okay, well, that's, I don't know why you think, why would you even, what does that have to do with anything? And be like, oh, it was multiple black guys. Okay, well, you know, just, you know, I wouldn't have thought it was a red flag, honestly speaking, but the fact that you're bringing it up like that, it's a red flag. Like, what are you even trying to like, tell me right now? What are you like passively trying to, like how many black guys was it? Like 15? Like what do you, what, 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 what kind of, what kind of party was this exactly? Were you having copious amounts of black dudes? Why black dudes specifically? I don't know, man. For some reason, a lot of people think that BBCs are, like, the most disrespectful form of penis. So, I guess, like, if you tell somebody that you had BBC in your mouth at one point, a lot of people might consider that to be a lot worse than just having a regular Caucasian man's penis in your mouth. Which, in all in all honesty, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is going to offend a lot of people. It's going to be a hot take. Not all black guys have big penises. I can vouch for that. I've seen a lot of black guy penises and not, you know, a lot of them do are, are the normal size, five to six inches, which is fine. You can have a regular size penis and not think that you got a junior. That's just what it is. How it works is BBC is anything eight and above. But if you, if you're in that, if you're in the ballpark between six to eight inches, that's a BBC junior and then eight and up that's, that's BBC territory. Um, so that's just what it is. And white guys can't have BBCs. It just wouldn't be called BBCs because that doesn't make any sense. I'd be black, right? Big black. So it'd be like white guy penis or something like that. I don't know, man. But the point I'm making is, I don't even know what the fuck a point I'm making is actually. I have no idea, dude. Yeah. That's what online dating is though. You're going to, you're going to have to get ghost. That's just what it is. It's better than meeting up with somebody and they don't show up though. And then give it a day or two and they're ghosting you. 
or they say things like, Sorry, I got chlamydia again. Can't talk to you. Sorry, my great great grandmother just passed away again. Can't talk to you. If they come up with some excuses, that's probably way worse than just ghosting, ghosting you. Ghosting you. Or they say things like, let's hang out. And you're like, okay, great. And they cancel the plans. Yeah. Or they don't even text you to say, hey, are we still going on for our plans? Why don't you do that? Why, why don't you do that? Why, why do you put all the onus on the guy? Sometimes I think that women need to step up a little bit more when it comes to relationships. Like if you think it's a guy that's like hot or you think he's like super attractive or you just like the way he like his vibe or whatever people say it nowadays. You, I don't think it's a bad thing to go up to a guy and be like, hey, dude, um, I think you're cool. You want to go get coffee? And I guarantee you nine times out of ten, that guy's going to go, yeah, 100 percent. Let's go right now. Um, unless he has a girlfriend. And in that case, you should obviously respect that. Or if he's gay, then you made a major mistake. I don't know how the fuck you didn't know that he was gay. That dude is literally walking with like ankle. He's walking in here with a tank top and a crop top. Also, his hair is in a, t a bun and he's got like armbands and his fingers are painted. And he's, his name isn't Billy Idol. So, you know, in those cases, it's probably better to just know. Oh, okay, never mind that. Right. Uh, maybe make a friend. I don't fucking know if he's gay or something like that. Probably don't make a friend if he has a girlfriend because you had other intentions. But it's always beneficial to be a woman and ask a guy out because most of the time the guy's going to say yes because most dudes never have that interaction before ever in their entire life. So it's probably going to be really refreshing. To say, hey, are we still going on for our plans? So you just sit at home all dressed up looking nice. You're for sad as fuck, dude. What are you talking about, man? So you, So you're talking about you sat home all day. And never once thought of hitting this dude up and be like, hey, dude, we on for tonight? We doing some shit tonight? We, what are we doing? What are we, we getting into some adventures? You just sat there for like nine plus hours dressed up on your bed, sitting there depressed as fuck while eating like Ben and Jerry's, wondering whether or not this guy was going to hit you up. What is this storyline? Why? Are, what is up with for you? nothing. And I have crushes. <laughs> yeah. I have some guys I'm interested in. Cool. Hit him up. And I know I don't have the prettiest face. I definitely have some meat on my bones. It's cool to acknowledge that you have some defects. I'll agree. That's probably the best thing. But I hate it when people go into relationships or they're approaching situations with uh, literally like you're, you're supposed to put your best foot forward. But when in reality, all you're really doing is like you're dragging your knuckles, dude. Like, what are you doing right now? You're literally going into this shit going like, I know I'm ugly. I know I don't have the best features. I know that I'm fat. What the fuck, bro? Nobody wants to hear that shit. Like, nobody. It's not a good thing to meet up with somebody and you have all these things on the back of your mind. Go in there thinking you're the shit. Thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, or at least go in their baseline, like, whatever you are. I think most people are not thinking about in the back of their head how fat as fuck they are and how ugly they are. Nobody's thinking that most of the time. You probably have, like, a, I don't know. 30 minutes every, like, two or three days where you're thinking, like, damn, I'm really musty today. What the fuck? Did I forget I put on deodorant again? And then you put on some deodorant, and then you realize you, you're much better, Ralph, right? But you shouldn't be approaching that shit. Like, you know how many times it's such a big turnoff in any situation to have somebody that you're in a relationship with that goes, you're so much smarter than me. You're so much prettier than me. You're so much more beautiful than me. You, you know, you always do so much things better than me. Why the fuck are you shitting on yourself when you give me a compliment? I don't like that shit. You're not... Stop throwing yourself down to elevate me. Like, just compliment, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, you're smart. Just say that. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Or, you know, like, oh, yeah, I think that you dress nice today compared to, oh, I think that you dress so much better than me. Fuck you. Stop doing that shit. That's it's not good. And the same thing here. Why are you shitting on yourself? I don't care that you're fat. I don't care that you think you're ugly. That's not a good thing to do regardless. I don't have the prettiest face. I definitely have some meat on my bones. Then lose it. But I have a good heart. Everybody has a good heart. I, I mean, this is such a bullshit ass statement, dude. Everybody, you think people are walking around thinking that they're assholes? Nobody thinks that. So when I hear people go, I have a good, I have a good personality. I'm funny. I'm just, you know, people don't know how great I am. Why the fuck are you telling me instead of showing me? I don't give a fuck that you can tell me that you have a good personality or you have a good heart. I don't give a fuck. That means nothing to me. It literally means nothing. Like, what is even the point of telling me this information, given the fact that you have no success in relationships? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm the type of girl who will make sure there's a hot meal when my guy comes home. 
appear oh, yeah okay real yeah that's fucking awesome dude you know really really try to apply to like the trad cons here dude you know the traditional husbands that's exactly what you want yeah guess what babe i'll make you a hot meal what the fuck is even that what are you talking about man what does anybody really okay it might be a good thing for some guys to look for a woman that can cook them a hot meal but i i don't think most dudes are looking for that nowadays i just kind of want somebody that's nice Somebody that's going to be compatible with them in a relationship. I don't know. I mean, I mean all right, cool. I mean, I'll, I'll hear her out, I guess. But it's like, it's, it's such a weird thing to be like, I have a good heart. I'll cook you food. Okay. Thanks, I guess. Who will make sure there's a hot meal. Every day? When my guy comes home. Every day? You go and do that every day? It's not sustainable. Don't fuck with me. I'll throw his uniform in the wash. What uniform? I'll start a hot shower for him. I could do that myself. I don't know, bro. I feel like this girl has like a weird idea of what relationships are. What? It's it's real nice when you're dating somebody and they do cook you food or maybe they order something for you. That's always nice. That is always nice, randomly, right? But I would never expect somebody to always cook me food no matter what time or whatever day, wash my fucking, my uniform. What, I don't know, what am I, a mailman or something? Whatever. And uh, run the hot shower every time. What are you fucking talking about? These are not buying points. These are just like basic things that you should be doing. But I mean, granted, you're not supposed to be doing these all the time. This is just normal shit. You understand? Like, do you think guys are incapable of cooking their girls' food? Do you think <laughs> you think guys are incapable of turning the knob on the shower in order to turn it on? No, this is like normal shit, okay? This is like normal shit. But I'm happy that you think that you have a good heart. Yeah. And then at the end of the day... Like, why? What is, who are you trying to sell right now? Like, what are you, who are you trying to apply for? What is this What is this video for? You hoping that, like, a random guy is, like, watching this TikTok and going, Oh, wow, I found a good one. A girl that can cook me food. And a girl that can wash my uniform. What the fuck is this? What is, what is this video? Who is it for? When we're both laying in bed, Ugh. getting ready to go to sleep, I'll talk... Are you out of breath? What, what, why are you out of breath making this video right now? I mean, you're just sitting in your car right now. All right, whatever, dude. And we're both laying in bed. Such a such a weird scenario already lined up. Getting ready to go to sleep. I'll talk to him and ask him how his day was. It's not the right time for that. I'm trying to go to sleep. You just said it, not me. If we're about to go to bed, don't talk to me. I'm trying to go to sleep, okay? You know what I hate so much in relationships, all right? I, at the, 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 the night, the nighthood, right? At the very end of the day, leave me alone for like an hour because I'm just gonna watch a, a probably like, a 12 hour documentary on dinosaurs, but I'm only gonna get like 30, 30 of the probably 30 minutes in, and then I'm gonna just fall asleep off that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my night routine. Don't touch me, don't talk to me. And I know that sounds insensitive, but people have different routines, right? And I don't think it's far fetched for me to just sit there and like watch a video for 30 minutes so I could fall asleep. That's just what I do. That's how I like to fall asleep. That's like my, my, what is it? Like my sensual time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's cool that you're talking to your boyfriend. Maybe a better time. Like when you guys are sitting on the couch, I think that conversation should come up, but I think they should come up organically. I don't think it's a good idea to have like a particular time and place and setting where you guys have to talk about something because sometimes people are just not willing to talk about things at that particular moment. And then you're going to feel entitled that they should be talking about it in that particular moment, but they're just not willing to. Getting ready to go to sleep. I'll talk to him and ask him how his day was. Cool. To make him feel like he is wanted and his feelings are valid the fuck <laughs> what what and it just sucks the fuck are you talking about what to make sure his feelings are valid everything you've said i'm gonna keep it a buck everything you've said so far in this video is basic shit this is all basic shit it's not like none of that was like you know, it's like when women go like, I'm just asking for the bare minimum. And the bare minimum is always like, have a job, <laughs> wash your clothes, shave. You know what I'm talking about? Clean up after yourself. That's what you're basically doing here. You're going like, I can do dishes. I can walk. I can't. It's like, it's such basic shit. Like, I hope that you can fucking cook food. I hope that you can run a shower. I hope that you can fucking talk to me about the times I need to talk about things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, whatever, bro. Maybe I'm misreading this shit, but this sounds like some basic bullshit. It sucks when. When it sucks. You just want to feel loved like everybody else. Who are you comparing yourself to? What do you mean like everybody else? You know, there are like 
a large portion of people that die alone that never have any type of relationships at all. What the fuck are you talking about right now? What people that watch TikTok have, or even in social media in general, and I feel like this affects so much more negatively to younger girls because it skews your perception of reality so heavily because you think that this is the way things are supposed to be or like you're seeing somebody doing something that's incredibly beautiful or happy or like somebody's boyfriend bought them this or you bought this or you did that with your boyfriend and in all reality dude you're not them you're not that guy you're not those people it's okay though to not be those people because guess what even though you're seeing this like beautiful side of this relationship odds are they're probably complaining about the fact that he wants to do anal and she doesn't and she's got athlete's foot on the back of her mouth. And he's probably got some, you know, probably got some weird fetishes. Like he wants to suck another woman's toes or fart on their faces or something like that. It's never as cut and dry as a lot of people think it is. It's weird, okay? People have terrible things about them all the time. And just because you're seeing the good stuff doesn't mean there isn't bad stuff behind it. So whatever you're seeing that you're comparing this, this lack of nothing that you have... Com compared to what they have, I promise you it's not as beautiful as you think it is. Like, stop watching social media and stop comparing your relationship because you're never going to live up to whatever the fuck that is. That's an imaginary definition of what a relationship is. Nobody has relationships like that. Hate to tell you. I know what's worse is when you have guys, again, who are showing interest in you. That's easy. Guys are going to do that shit, bro. Listen, dude, okay? Guys are going to hit you up because and they'll probably do it because they want to smell your vagina or maybe they think they can get a, a, a vagina picture from you or at the bare minimum they hope that you can tell them that they're pretty or that they're asking them to see if they're you know maybe they get at the bare minimum send you a picture of their penis unsolicitedly i don't know guys are willing to have sex with dirty basketballs it's okay all right you have to understand this when guys hit you up don't take it personal that shit is easy that's just gonna be one thing i've always said right is that since the time like women were like 14, women have never not had guys hit them up. It's like a constant thing. Women have like been bombard bombarded with men that are just trying to have sex with them all the time, especially in this age of social media, but for all of time. So if you're like, I don't know, like you think it's crazy that this guy's hitting you up and you're you're getting messages from dudes, I gotta let you know something, dude. That's a whatever. That that guy, he he don't he don't give a fuck. That's he does. He probably it's like fifty guys, fifty girls a day, and they don't want the same connection as you do. No shit. Duh, fucking duh, duh. Most people on dating apps in general probably don't even have the same. Most women that you meet on social, most women you meet on dating apps are just there to make fun of you or just get like validation. Most girls are not even fucking with you. Most girls, which is really sad. Most guys on dating apps are only there to have sex. It is what it is. These, you have to come to this understanding. So like what, and I also hate it when people go like, you don't feel the same way that I do. No fucking shit. Most people don't feel the same way that you do. Most people that are in relationships with you are not feeling the same way that you do. You may feel stronger than them. They may feel stronger than you. Maybe they just feel stronger about you in different areas. So a fucking course is never gonna be like equal. It's never gonna be like perfectly like interlocking. No, fucking duh. The same connection as you do. Because they're feeling their own loneliness. <laughs> okay. I just want to feel good enough. Good enough for somebody. <laughs> and I know... I know my time will come. Terrible. Everybody tells me. But it's exhausting. Yes. It is exhausting to sit around yes. waiting for that moment. It is what it is. That's what dating is in general, dude. You have you get into the pool like everybody else and you try, 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 try. Some people don't have to try. Some people just have it happen passively, right? That's cool for them. You're not them. It's okay though, because where they don't try, they get they get people. That's not somebody you should be comparing yourself to. That's an anomaly. Most people have to try. So when you're going through these like emotions of like, man, I'm a really good person. I really just want to have a person to be with. Everybody's having that. Everybody's doing that. And you're not unique in that, okay? And I don't want to say that you're not unique. Sure, I'm sure you're unique. I'm sure you have a whole bunch of things that are really cool about you. And maybe you collect stamps and you like to lick the backside of peanut butter jars. I don't know. Whatever the fuck makes you unique, I'm sure that's cool. But everybody is looking for somebody. Everybody wants somebody. And by the way, that little thing that you said where it's like, I know it's gonna happen to me eventually, that's a lie. 
That's a fucking lie. People die alone all the fucking time. People literally have never, so some people have never had relationships in their entire life. Okay? You know why? Because they thought that it was going to happen to them organically. They were just going to live passively in their mom's basements. Or like they were just fucking going to work a 9 to 5 for their entire fucking life. Never go outside. Never have social life. Never interact with anybody. And just work, 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 work. And then never meet anybody and have any social interactions at all. So you have to try. You have to actually put yourself in positions where you can meet people and find these relationships. It's not going to be easy. So, I mean, I, that's, that's really what it comes down to. It's going to be tough regardless. Exhausting to sit around waiting for that moment so stop sitting around be past don't be passive be active especially when you have guys who are telling you all these things which it don't don't be, listen dude oh this is the sin of social media do you know how many women that think they're tens when when all in reality they're average which is fine by the way it's okay to be average there's nothing wrong with being average but you have if you are on social media for any extent of time you have to understand that most of the interactions that you're going to have with people, especially if you're in the woman bracket, most of them are going to be a facade. They're going to be an illusion. They're going to not going to, they're not going to be the whole truth because most of the time when dudes hit you up, they're trying to get something out of you. They're not just going to blindly compliment you and tell you that you're a beautiful, spectacular person. They're expecting something in return. And if they don't, that's an anomaly or they're just weird, right? So if you're a woman on social media and you get a hundred dudes telling you every single day that you're beautiful and you're gorgeous and you're fantastic and all these other things, that doesn't mean it's real. Like that doesn't mean it's true. You just have people on the, that your Instagram or um, your fucking whatever platform that you're using. These people, they're there to entertain themselves as much as they're entertaining you. They're trying to get something out of you. Don't think you're special. It is what it is, okay? Like I'm not saying you're not special. I'm not saying you're not beautiful. I'm sure there are cases of scenarios where somebody is genuinely beautiful, but that doesn't always mean. Like there are plenty of people that just get DMs or whatever the fuck telling them that they're pretty beautiful and all this other stuff. It's, it's not true most of the time. And they don't want to make a move. Yeah, no shit, dude. It's like, oh man, I'm, I'm, I, I just, this girl is fucking, it, dude, these guys are not trying to take, make a move because they don't want you. They're just trying to get something out of you without any commitment. That's what it's all, that's what they're doing. That's, that's the end. That's the, what they're doing, man. They just want to keep you an option. No, they don't. Most of these guys, man, I feel like this woman has no fucking idea what she's talking about. Okay. Here's the thing, okay? I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to black pill everybody here, okay? <laughs> most men want to have sex with you, and most women want to be in relationships with you. But, like, seldom. Like, it's like you have to work very hard to get into a relationship with a woman, whereas for men, just have dick, and they'll just throw it around. They don't give a fuck. Like, guys all have sex with, like, dried up watermelons, right? It's whatever. So, if you're sitting here, and you're getting a ton of messages from guys, and you're determining that these guys all think you're beautiful— you're lying to yourself. That guy wants to smell your vagina. I hate to tell you. It is what it is, okay? And if you want a relationship with this guy, ask him, hey, bro, um, I'd be perfectly willing to let you smell my vagina if you commit to me, if we could do this, if you can, like, be my, my manses, if you could, you know? Like, these things are fine to talk about, but if that guy, like, gives you no indication of that shit, what the fuck are you expecting, dude? It is what it is. Like, it, it, that's just how, that's just how the, the, in general, that's how everything works. I don't want to be an option. What? The fuck you talking I about? I want to be wanted. Okay. I'm going to I'm just I'm going to forgive the fact that she just she contradicted herself a little bit, but okay. I mean, you are wanted just not in the way that you want to be wanted. You want to be wanted in a relationship, but you don't want to be wanted for your body or whatever. I want to have my person. Everybody. It's like okay. Yeah, I, I want a Bugatti. I want a fucking Lamborghini. I want a, a fucking $4 billion computer. I want this. I want that. Like, I get it. I know. We all want things. But it's not as simple as just wanting something and getting it. You have to work for shit. You can't just... All right, man, whatever. Though. What do you want, like, socialism and dating? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, everybody has a quota of people that they have to date? What are you talking about, man? <sighs> I feel I feel for her, but she just, like, has a very ignorant way of thinking about this. I just want to be wanted. Yep. And if anybody of you are feeling the same way that I am. Everybody. You know. <laughs> you know how much it sucks. Everybody. Everybody thinks this. Yeah. I hope your day. I hope this girl's day is better. I hope Kara Joe is having a good day because 
I feel for her, dude. I mean, I, I don't know how old she is. She looks like I thought she was like 30. But uh, maybe she's younger than that. I and mean, you can't tell oftentimes with people that are like really overweight or obese or something like that. Oh, fucking no, dude. Okay. I feel for her, though. We don't talk enough about the amount of trauma that you experience while dating. Hear me out. Ghosting is traumatic as fuck. Going on dates with men who wouldn't think twice about SAing you, traumatic as fuck. Having conversations with men who don't give a shit about you as a person, but also who don't think that you are valuable as a woman, that shit is traumatic. And you go through it over and over and over. Yeah, I mean, it's always been like that, though. Like, for, I mean, I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you, you're not a saint either. Like, there are plenty of women out there that use men perpetually for resources or money or time or energy or fucking whatever, dude, right? Like, it's not just men that are terrible, disgusting people. It's equal on both sides. It's just different. So, I mean, but I'm not here to, like, compare and contrast. I just don't like it when people look at it from one perspective and they're not willing to look at it from the other side. Like, yes, men are disgusting, terrible dis creatures, and they're, like— primarily driven based off of like one of two things like a woman that has a nice tasty vagina and then like i don't know boobs or something like that so i guess that's kind of the same vein but like um i think that this is just how it is in relationships like you're gonna have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to find that one person that like is a diamond in a rough dude you gotta go through a lot of garbage to find that one pearl you know what i'm talking about like it's gonna be hard it's gonna be difficult i mean obviously i've been through that shit i've, I've, I've talked to so many people that were just crunchy so much so that you find yourself like having to take a break from dating to heal from the trauma that you experience while dating. Bruh, I'm just out here trying to find my person. Everybody is. But this shit is hard. Yeah, no shit. The there's, there's plenty of things that you can do as well, though, to while, while, while being a woman that would increase your chances of finding a potential candidate. Um, I always say this for men, but like for men, it's always like the simple things like shave, take care of yourself, right? Make a decent income. I don't know, have more than just one plate, one fork, one spoon in a, in a fucking bowl in your house. Actually have furniture, understand how to communicate with women. Don't just sit there and fucking talk to your Discord friends for 20 hours a day and then go to sleep and then do it all over again. Actually have social interactions. For women, it's a little bit more complex in a very narrow sense. Because, like, whereas men can do, like, a ton of things to, like, really make themselves very, very attractive towards women. Because women have the tendency of forgiving a lot of physical traits if the guy is more valuable in other traits, right? So, like, women are more willing to negate some aspects of a man. So, if a guy's ugly in the face or a guy's gutted up or maybe he's, like, I don't know, his kneecaps are inverted or something like that. If the guy is funny, if the guy is charismatic, if the guy has all these good traits, oftentimes I find... Women are more willing to date a guy that's ugly or a uh, four or something like that because he's cool to be around. He's a nice guy. He's cool, right? But for women, it's like not like that, right? A lot of guys baseline don't really give a fuck about women in the sense of like personalities and things like that. And I'm sure there are plenty of men that do. But most of the time when you're talking about the attraction that men have for women, it's really just physical for the most part. That's like the baseline. And sure, there are the secondary characteristics where I feel like women have the secondary characteristics first. And I'm not saying that physical appearance isn't important for women. Obviously, it is. But women, I feel like, are more likely to look for the nuance, whereas men are just broad spectrum dismissing women that could be you know, diamonds. But because they're fives or fours, they're just like, no, I'm not fucking with that. And that's really tough. But for women, I always find, especially if you're in a bracket like this where you're obese, you could really just improve your entire – you can improve your entire bracket by emphasizing it since you know how the game is played. You have to be pretty, and that's just what it is. I know it sucks, but it is what it is. So when you want to appeal to a man, what do you do? There's a reason why women wear makeup. There's a, women, there's a reason why women like uh, really try to emphasize their figure. It's because they know that men ultimately want these things. And I'm not saying it's like that easy, but – you can do things to improve your 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 performance in these particular things. Like, I mean, understand the game, right? Understand the game as much as you can. Lose some fucking weight. I don't know, dude. Um, I'm not saying anything in particular with her. Have a good skincare routine. Have a good hair care routine. Um, I'm not saying that you can't be a good person in general. Like, have a good personality. Also, obviously, work on yourself as much as you can because those secondary traits are going to be super valuable because nobody wants to be with a walking brick. Um uh, that's very pretty, like chiseled down brick, granted, but um, you should have something behind it as well because oftentimes men will like, oh, wow, this girl's really pretty and then eventually go, but what else does she have, right? Especially as you get older, most men are not looking for women that are just fucking bricks unless you're talking about those red pill guys.
Probably but even those guys are not dating women that are above like 25. So I guess that rules it out if you're above 25. You're lucky, I guess. I found my person, but this shit is hard. It looked at the impact of being associated near a plus size person. And this is why plus size dating can be so, so different. I think the most demeaning and offensive trope about plus size people in media to me is the stereotypical comedy movie or sitcom where the lovable male lead is confronted with a fat person as a romantic prospect. I think this woman is trapped in like 2004. We don't make movies like that anymore, dude. We died, that, gen that genre died out 15, 20 years ago, dude. Uh, I haven't seen movies like that in a long time. So, I mean, whatever you're talking about right now is very, very old. It's not something that's reflected in reality. And we are supposed to sympathize with him because he's so disgusted and horrified. This trope was all over sitcoms like Friends, Hi, Met Your Mother. It's yeah. in movies. The uh, fucking two shows from like 10, 15 fucking... Dude, Friends? The 90s, dude? Like the early 2000s? My, How I Met Your Mother? Did that show end in like... 2014? Like, what are you doing, bro? That was more than 10 years ago. I just watched a clip of Good Luck Chuck in my class the Good other Luck day. Good Luck Chuck? Good Luck Chuck, dude? What did that movie come out like 2009? What are you fucking talking about? A clip of Good Luck Chuck in my class the other day. I'm taking a class called Cinematic Bodies. And in that clip from Good Luck Chuck, the male lead has this curse on him where everybody he sleeps with immediately finds the, the love of their life right after. So in order to break the curse, what he has to do is sleep with the one woman in the world that no other man would ever fall in love with. And that is, of course, a fat woman. It's, it's super interesting that she has to use this very niche scenario of a movie from like 2007, 2008 to justify her point that fat people are being oppressed and that the view of fat women in society is somehow like super skewed and that, you know, fat women are undesirable because one movie this one time that happened. What are you doing, man? Why do you have to go so far to justify your point? You can you come to come up with something more generic than this. So he's essentially forced to have sex with her. And it's like this. It's presented as literal horror. And effectively, the point of this sequence is that he is forced to engage sexually and romantically with a plus-size woman against his will. And I think when this stuff plays out in me- It's a little traumatic, dude. I've had sex with a plus-size woman before and a big plus-size woman at that. And it was uh, not good for me. I didn't even know what was going on half the time. Like when we were doing it, dude, I, I, I could have, it could have been a man the whole time, dude. Cause I had not even known I slipped something somewhere, but I didn't know where it went. I didn't even know what it was because like, how could I, there was no lights. When I got up to like, look, I had no, I couldn't see anything. There was no visuals. So I was even, I couldn't even find it, whatever I was trying to infiltrate. So I'd even ask her, I was like, can you help me out a little bit? Cause I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. So she had to help me out. She was bald. So it could have been a dude. It could, I could have been, it could, I, you know, I could have been a full-blown man. I'm pretty sure it was a woman, but who knows? Who, who knows, dude? It was a very dramatic experience for me. That was the first time I lost my virginity, too. Media, and it's framed like horror. Horror is, in media studies and film studies, Terrible. The way it's interpreted is it's like a cultural fear, a manifestation of a cultural fear in the form of entertainment. So this fear, of course, is of dating a fat person, being associated with yeah, a fat person. Yeah, that one person. movie, right? And you see all these men who are ostensibly good stand-up guys who, you know, have jobs and are reasonably <laughs> attractive and are- yeah, They have jobs. Good, reasonable men. Guys that have jobs and are attractive. I wouldn't say that a guy in this movie- Obviously, he's a deplorable individual. Good luck, Chuck. If, he's, if you're telling me the plot of the story, I don't know if I've seen Good Luck, Chuck. But I'm pretty sure I did. Because I watch very terrible ro romantic comedies a lot. I really like romantic comedies. And if you're telling me this guy was, like, literally just having sex with copious amounts of women. Like, dozens and dozens and dozens of women. I don't think it's good, no matter what gender you are, to have sex with copious amounts of people. That shows me that you have a... Um, a bad understanding of how people should actually be, you know, like you shouldn't be having sex with massive amounts of people like go ahead and do it if you want to, but I don't look highly upon it no matter who you are. So I wouldn't say it personally that this guy was a good guy. Our leads of TV shows and their worst fear is being associated with a fat person or in a romantic a person, or sexual yeah. manner. Yep. And a lot of times this trope isn't even as literal as good luck Chuck in that the person is in no way obligated or will get nothing out of engaging with that fat person romantically or sexually. Like our bumbling, lovable male lead Chandler Bing Barney Stinson, whoever it is has absolutely nothing to lose by saying no thank you to a fat woman that he's set up with or that expresses interest in him. Yeah, because you just don't want to. If it's not your... Dude, 
like most people, I'm going to keep it a solid buck with you. Most people do not find fat people attractive. And this goes for men and women. Universally across the board, being fat is like one of the number one predictors to not, not have a relationship. It's just what it is. You might have sex as a woman to be a big plus size individual, sure. Um, but that's not really any, any indication of like actual romantic love because it's just sex. A lot of people nowadays just use sex as like a form of currency. Like I have sex with you, you have sex with me. It's like a, I don't know, like a line of currency basically. So I don't put too much value in sex anymore. Um, I do put a lot of value in sex with the person that you're with. Like that's awesome. I mean, granted you can have sex with whoever you want. I'm not telling you to who you can and can have sex with, but here's the thing, right? If you're sitting here and you're telling me that you have a problem with men or even women having having not wanting to have sex with fat women or fat fat men, yeah, obvious fucking lee. Most people do not want to. There's like most people are is just unattractive for most people. Most people don't want to deal with the fact that this person has extra issues, extra appendages, things such and so forth. The sex is depending on how fat this person is is not going to be good most of the time. I mean, what are you going to do? Like you're going to drop your gun on the on my back and you're gonna give me like early scoliosis nothing and yet it's his worst fear for him to even be approached by her because that signals to the world that she and he are in some way on the same level and that is what is so unthinkable to him and presenting this to the audience as horror within the conventions of like the way that it's shot it allows the audience to sort of work through their fear of that and then turn the joke back on the fat person so they can laugh at it is this what your like professor said are you like perfectly reciting what your professor said like how how did you come to this realization off of one movie and how can you relate this to what we're what's happening now in society do you think that i'm gonna keep it a buck i'm i think that right now in society the year being 2024 fat women are super incentivized in the dating market because it's like a i would say it's like a form of affirmative action almost like people kind of feel bad when fat people are fat and they kind of feel like they they should be or it's like inflation almost no, no pun intended there where there's so many people that are fat and so many people hear that fat people are great, beautiful, and amazing, spectacular. Therefore, they just feel like, oh, why shouldn't I date this person? Then they do. And it's always issues because that person is incompatible with the lifestyle that you represent. And also, we're becoming slowly but surely more and more sensitive as a society, which could be a good thing and a bad thing depending on how you look at it. And because of that, people are more willing to accept things that they wouldn't traditionally be a, they wouldn't traditionally accept, like dating a fat person. So... If you're upset that a movie that came out in 2007 depicting a man who had sex with copious amounts of women did not like having sex with this particular woman who was fat, and you're determining that to be like a reflection of society at large, I think you're right. I think most people don't want to have sex with fat people. I mean, that's just what it is. is if fat people are just not attractive for the greater population. You can be fat and you can feel this way, and I'm sure you would have some success while being fat and dating, but what you're doing fundamentally when you're fat and dating it's like you're taking this giant bracket of people that would be attracted to you if you were thinner and you're funneling them and people are going to float up from the sides, right? You understand like you're pay you're putting yourself in a very niche category to where like any any anybody that comes to a giant funnel, right? They're coming down through that funnel are basically just going to be guys that just don't give a fuck about themselves or guys that maybe just have very low standards, guys that fetishize you. It's going to be like one of those two things. And sure, you can find a really, 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 really like good guy who's like maybe um, like well-rounded and like he actually does like you for you. But the chances of that happening in a very general speaking point of view is limited. Now I can imagine what it could be like for you. It's like you're playing with the 1% off the 1% off the 1%. But I actually do think that a lot of people have a very deep fear of being associated with a fat person because of what it would do to their social standing. I think most of the time when people are thinking about dating a fat person, I don't think most of the time they're thinking about what they're going to be perceived as in a social situation. I think most people are going to think about, man, I got to pick this bitch up. I got to fucking, my back is going to be blown out, dude. I'm going to, can you imagine that, dude? You being the guy and your, your back get blown out or maybe you're thinking about all the times you're gonna have to drive into the hospital because she has high blood pressure when you meet her or maybe you're even wondering if she's a woman at all it could be a whole bunch of those issues so i don't know i i would i would think that most people probably don't even give a fuck about the social situation like what are you in high school most people don't care like i don't give a fuck if i'm going outside like obviously you want to appeal to the public in the sense of like you should dress well or at least presentable enough but i don't think many many people care about who you're dating or like even if you're dating at all i don't give a fuck like, never once have I walked down the street. Well, I can't lie. There have been a few times where I looked at a very skinny man, and I've looked at a very obese woman, and I thought, God 
damn, that big, big, like so big sometimes. I remember I'll look at this one woman wearing like white skinny jeans coming out of a beauty supply, beauty supply store with her, um, her boo. And dude, I literally saw this woman and I was like, oh, oh, oh. Like I had to like crack my neck backwards because of how massive this woman was. She was struggling so hard, but I wasn't really like looking at him as like a damn that sucks. I'm sure that she's super valuable in more directions than just being um, aesthetically pleasing. Maybe she is aesthetically pleasing to him, but I guess uh, maybe I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Dude. Whatever. And this is because they so associate fatness with being lower in the social hierarchy. And they know that even being- It is associate. It is lower in the social hierarchy. But then again, you know, like you're putting yourself in that bracket. So you can't really blame anybody but yourself. Associated with a fat person will drag them down in the social hierarchy. So it's almost like if you're associated with a fat person, you might as well just be fat yourself. Why plus size girls dating a thin person? Of course people think because he's thin that he can give me workout advice. True. When I'm the one in the gym, four to five. If you're obese and you're going to the gym, that's, that is a terrible thing. If you, are you losing weight? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to lose weight? Oftentimes, I hear that these people are not trying to lose weight. So if you're going to the gym without the intention of losing weight, that sucks. That's terrible, man. Five times a week, I literally have to beg him to go with me. We're plus size girls dating a thin person. Of course people think that he's gay. Literally just for being a- <laughs> Damn. When is he going to say that he's gay? Yeah, uh, if I would be with you, I would be going to the gym. That's so that's crazy as fuck to say, dude. That is a crazy as disrespectful comment, dude. To sit there and go, if you're plus size, he has to be gay if he's dating you. Like he has to he has to be so unattracted to you that he the idea of you is like a ugh because you're a woman and not because you're fat. That is that is so ungodly levels of disrespectful. Attracted to you, a literal woman. We're plus size people dating a thin person. Of course people are gonna spam your comments with your man can do way better than you. One day he'll leave you and he realizes it. D <laughs> That's so bad, bro. That is so ungodly levels of terrible, dude. Who are these people, man? Purple Rider is a fucking menace, dude. Whoa, that's hard as hell. Woman, we're plus size people dating a thin person. Of course, people are going to spam your comments with what is wrong with him. He can do so much better. Damn. If growing up fat or otherwise <laughs> not conventionally attractive has made you feel like a monster, how do you stop feeling that way? It's Lose a good weight. question, and I do still feel like a monster sometimes, but I will give you a list of things that have helped me over the years. Is any of them weight loss? If not, then this fucking list is for nothing. Like, if you... If you're telling me that you're so fat that you consider looking like a monster while you're dating, why don't you just lose weight and not have that be an option? What the fuck, man? These people always have problems and they're never willing to do anything about them. Context, I got fat when I was 10 and that's when I first started to feel like a monster. You got fat when you were 10, which is not your fault because you were a child. I'm gonna give you that. You were children, nothing you could do about that. But once you turned 18, you could. You could do something about that. Now, 100% as a full-grown woman you have the ability and the willingness and the aptitude to lose weight and yet you've done nothing about it and this is why i always say like if you're raising your kids to be fat man you are setting themselves you are setting them for a lifetime of fucking failure dude because a fat kid is a fat person that is always going to be ingrained in them it's going to be so hard for them to beat that fucking terribleness out of them anyway felt that way pretty much my entire life until i started really analyzing where those thoughts had come from and what i found was that stomach the reasons that Big. i was judging myself to be a monster were because like i had been taught by the world that that's what i was right it's always the world it's never you it's never accountability for yourself man and the reasons that anybody else might have reacted to me as though i was a monster were the same they had been taught by the world by media by culture by their friends by their family or they, just, they never not liked fat women is that really like really every single person that thought you were a monster they thought that you were it was it was just ingrained in them because of society Get the fuck out of here, dude. What is this copium you're sniffing on right now? That is a, that's a crazy ass statement. I, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I think that there are probably most people, if you ask them like, hey, what's the reason you don't find me attractive? I think they're going to go, I'm just not really into fat girls like at all. And then you go, is it because society told you that? Is it because society said that you shouldn't be attracted to fat women? They were going to go, uh, nah, I just don't like the grease. 
I just don't like the big gut, the bigness. I don't like that. No, I don't like Alan go to the hospital a lot. You know, I live a healthy lifestyle. So really, I just don't really want to date somebody that's, I'm pretty sure that would come up way more often than it's society that told me that I don't like, I feel like it'd be so much, bro. If you're out here telling me the reason why you don't want to date me is because society told you that I was ugly. I find that way more disrespectful than if you just told me that you thought I was ugly. I think that's probably way more of a better answer, dude. Whoever that, you know, being fat, meant you were a monster and Nobody that it this. was like dangerous for a fat person to have feelings for them we all were taught that from basically the same sources it's such a weird way of looking at how you how you're looking at this relationship a monster is such a fucking terrible way of looking at this really when you think about it no and i don't think anybody thinks a fat person is a monster maybe in the spectrum of like damn she can hold down a lot of weight she could put down a lot of food in her mouth maybe but i don't think many people like you're a fucking human being what do you mean monster dude what do you like the, talking about the people from where the wild things are thinking about it as something that we learned made it a lot easier to like potentially unlearn if that makes sense no it the doesn't make any sense it would be a lot easier for you to unlearn the poor eating habits that you had than you to discover that society put you in a bracket of monster that doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't be this. Other thing that will kill your feelings of monstrosity is community. You cannot feel like. Yeah, a find a community of people that are also monsters so you guys can like talk about your monstrousness and then come together and, and cumulatively agree that you're not monsters. What the fuck are you talking about? You just find whatever, dude, whatever you want to do, honestly, whatever gets you to sleep at night. But it's not good to find a community of people that all agree with the same shit relentlessly because you never grow a monster or feel like a freak when you are not the only one Terrible. the more you meet people like you the more you meet people who get it the more you are in community with those people the less monstrous you'll feel nothing that's like somebody going like hey dude hey jose i know you're like really mexican and like i know you want to become like a you want to become like an american so i have this great idea how about you go to like a mexican fiesta like go to like a, a whole fiesta a quinceanera of Mexican dudes to like really come up with like the identity of America. Yeah, I know that they they don't speak English and they like have no like prior uh, anything about being American, but that's what you should do. All right, yeah, that's exactly what you should fucking do. Don't don't look for people that would you know like that would actually know something. Go to the community where you know that you're just enable it, I guess. Nothing helped me more to accept myself and stop feeling like a monster than starting my- You, do, you, you don't- Do you know the reason why you still feel like a monster? Is because you just told us that you found a community of other people that were monsters and then like you now you now have something to relate to. So what the fuck are you even talking about? Why does it matter that Nothing you don't feel like a monster? Nothing helped me more to accept myself and stop feeling like a monster than starting my podcast, which is basically just me having <laughs> conversations plug. with other fat people about what it's like to be fat and what it's like to What's be a fat creative too, which is like something that made me feel feel really alone for my whole life but meeting other people in that category made me feel so much less alone and in feeling less alone i didn't feel as much like an anomaly and as much like a monster so yeah the two things that i can recommend are question everything question mm. where you learned all of this stuff and to meet other people who get it terrible I don't agree with any of that shit, dude. That's fucking terrible, dude. You should find community, 100%. But if you're never gonna, you're never gonna grow, especially if you're finding communities of people that all agree with everything that you're saying. But regardless, maybe it works for her. Maybe it'll work for you. I don't know. All right, guys. We're gonna end the video here. If you watched today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. I love you. I care for you deeply. I want to thank anybody that's a member of my channel. You can become a member of my channel right now by clicking the subscribe button and then clicking the join button that comes up right after that. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, I want to also thank everybody that subscribed. You guys are all beautiful, spectacular, amazing people. I would kiss you all on the forehead simultaneously if I could. But I don't have the affinity gauntlet, so I can't do that. Anyway, if you watch the video in its entirety and you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in America because I found a Captain America toy from like – McDonald's a few from I got this for like a few years ago it's supposed to light up but it has it, I guess the batteries died or whatever I, I found it in my closet I was cleaning out my closet because some shit went down last night and I got scared so I had to clean out everything in my fucking house man I got whatever dude maybe I'll talk about it if you ever see me on live stream anyway I'm super tired and I'm not like fully here because I stayed up until like f f seven last night fucking five or six or seven not willingly but anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm good now. It's okay. Just like you. You're good. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're spectacular. I care for you deeply. You smell like an amazing person. I love all the progress that you have. Keep being amazing. Thank you for taking some time with me today. Um, if you watched the video, and sorry, uh, you can tell I'm tired. Uh, if you want to check out my social media, 
It will be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, and Discord, and my second channel. If you want to check out any of those things, the links will be down in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.